The Fable games are known for their beautifully crafted characters and ambitious storytelling. So when we heard that the team behind the Fable universe were creating a new XBLA title for Spawnlings, we had high hopes for an exciting new adventure set in the Kingdom of Albion. So prepare to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Fable Heroes is a Mario Party inspired 2.5D side scrolling beat em up that you can play with up to four players online or offline, and it's a very different direction for this developer. The whole game plays out like a cute old fashioned puppet show. You begin by selecting your hero, sack puppet versions of the characters made famous from the series. You're then whisked away to the medieval land of Albion, where it's all very bright and colourful. The game uses an art style called cell shading, which I'm a particular fan of. Once you've selected your team of heroic rag dolls, you set off across the dining room table on a board game made up of key locations from the Fable universe. The goal in each level is simple. Fight off waves of critters as you push forward through the landscape, collecting power-ups as you go, and compete with your companions for that precious gold. This gold can then be spent on upgrades or outfits for your puppet pal. The upgrade system is sorted out in another board similar to Monopoly. Each player rolls a die and takes it in turn, landing on different upgrade tiles. I can't say I was a huge fan of this, you guys. I mean, the mix of random chance plus having to wait for everyone to take their turn really kills the pacing of the game. Yeah, it is very slow paced, isn't it? And plus, I felt the combat was very floaty. You never felt like your hits connected with any of the enemies. Then there's the stubborn camera angles, the crowded areas, plus you feel like you're controlling someone underwater the whole time. It just doesn't have anything like the case chaotic fun of games which are similar, such as Mario Party or Castle Crashers or even Lego Star Wars. Hack and Slash is a popular genre these days, so it's very strange to see one created by such a renowned developer like Lionhead Studios end up feeling like a cash-in of a once prestigious series. As you journey to the end of each level, you'll usually reach a fork in the road. Here you will have to select a path that leads to either a boss battle or a minigame of sorts. I had trouble working out which of these was which. The game only told me the name of location, not what to expect, so I was left sort of guessing. Do I go to the hive or the farm, the tomb or the clifftop? And when you do finally make a decision, I don't know about you, but I was disappointed with both of them. <laughs> For one thing, the boss battles are long and tedious. You just hack away at the feet of these oversized enemies, and it doesn't help that the camera pulls back to a ridiculous distance. Most of the time they repeat the same move and it's a pet hate of mine to have some big beautiful enemy and then just attack its feet uh, for ages. Uh, it's not fun. Lazy. It is lazy, Darren, and I don't like it. Otherwise there were the mini games and I was happy to see the famous chickens in Fable are still getting it tough, but generally they were just button mashing races and different vehicles and they weren't much fun at all. Behold, the most underwhelming sled race of all time. And this wouldn't have been a problem if they had just made the rest of the game a bit more interesting. The levels all do a good job of replicating those majestic Fable locales, and I enjoyed the interactive credit sequence too, but they all play out the exact same way. You fight a group of enemies, move forward, fight more bad guys, and then you're rewarded with a giant obstacle to destroy with the word break time. And these all just felt like giant roadblocks to me, telling me to slow down and have less fun, which is hard to do when you're not having much fun already. And what was up with all those glowing red titles? They don't fit in with the look of the game at all. If you do complete all of the levels, you can unlock a set of darker, more challenging ones, but really it's just more of the same. I'd say if you're absolutely set on playing a party brawler, there are plenty of better options out there for you, so I'm giving this 3 out of 10. I'm also giving it 3 out of 10, Hex.